Happy Wednesday, brothers in Christ. How are you guys doing today? And sisters in Christ as well. I had a sermon prepared for today. It was about Jeremiah. It was the whole story of Jeremiah. I've been working on it all week. God's had it on my heart all week to work on it. And last second, just like God likes to do, he, he changed his mind. And we're going to do something a little different here. Now, there's, in my county, it's a pretty Christian county. It's an area that, that's got a lot of churches. A lot of people claim to be Christians, and a lot of people are Christians in the county. I'm not saying that they're not. But today's verse and today what I want to talk about is a little different than the struggle that we go through that I talk about in the other videos that I do. Because there, there is a lot of struggle going on in this county as well. I promise you that much. So let's take a look, first of all, at Matthew 23, 3. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, they observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. It's a verse that a lot of people actually say today to a lot of people, and it's practice what you preach. And I'm not going to go on like a mission of mentioning names or anything like that. I don't think Jesus would do that, and I'm not going to do that. But there is a lot of preachers in this county that I have seen personally turn people away. The reason we can't get some of our kids and some of these Generation Z kids into church is because of the way they see people treated by the church. You can't treat people like garbage and claim to live like Christ. I see it all the time. I went to a church one time and it was a Sunday morning, and there was this family, and they were they were starving. They had kids. They, they walked into the church. They didn't know what else to do. They walked into the church and asked the preacher for help, and he turned them away. And then the deacons and the preachers laughed about it. They thought it was funny. I've heard people repeatedly say stuff about other people behind their gossiping and all that stuff, those verses we all know in the Bible very well. But Matthew 23, 3 basically says, practice what you preach. If you are a preacher and you're telling everybody, live like Christ, try to do your best to live like Christ. Nobody's sin free, but I promise you, if I'm in this community and I've got it, I'm going to help. Nobody else wants to help. There's a, a church down here, that just down the road from where I live, and they actually do help. They have a food bank every Tuesday. But the problem with the food bank every Tuesday is there's cars lined up all the way to the gas stations at the interstate. Why are that many people in this county hungry? It's because politics has gotten into religion. It's not the other way around. It should be the other way around, where God gets into the politics. We should be living by the law of God and not by the law of man. And we shouldn't be looking at our neighbors, staring at them while they starve or famine. There's other ways to say Matthew 23. If you go to the NIV version, which we're going to do now, then uh, Matthew 23, 3 says, So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. I've been in situations. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a sinner saved by grace. I can be honest with you guys about anything. I'm not going to mention names. Like I said, I won't go that far. But I've been in situations where I've been kicked out of churches for stuff we ain't even done. Were we not a good fit for Jesus? It's people like that that Jesus walked on this earth with. Preachers preaching down on people while they're sitting in church about how you shouldn't have to beg for food. And you should. Why shouldn't you? Have you seen the world we're living in? We may want to be in the image of Christ, but we can't make bread and fish like him. We're supposed to count on our fellow Christians to help one another. And then these kids, they see this stuff, and oh, I ain't, whatever with that, right? Those people just yell at you all day long and tell you this is how you're supposed to live, and then when they go out in the world, they don't live that way. And this message is coming straight from God himself. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Take it up with him. But if I have 
$20 and my neighbor is starving, guess who has $10? Me and my neighbor. And that's the way life should be. I'm thankful we have churches like that one down the street that helps people. But we shouldn't have that many hungry people to start with if we really are a county founded on Christian values, which we claim to be. Claim to be. In Matthew 5, 14, Jesus tells us, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People should be attracted by the light and the way we live and the words we speak, whether we like it or not. People are watching us and seeing how we respond to our ups and, day, ups and downs of every day's life. You want to preach to somebody, you want to talk to them, and I'm there to claim to be a preacher. I, I just do these because God tells me to, but you want to preach to somebody about doing something the right way or they're going to burn in hell when you leave that church. You want to just ignore the community. Go home and do whatever it is you're doing. When there's hungry people in this world every day. But what makes me even sadder is our own community are letting people go hungry. And it's a shameful thing in this county if you go up and ask for help. There's only like two or three churches that actually do it. We have a good Samaritan center just like every other county and city has. It's hard because I've been there. I've been there myself. I've been no money, no gas in the car, no food, no nothing, and addicted to drugs at the same time. And when you have those combinations of sin in you, well, preachers, they definitely don't want to help those kind of people. But I'm telling you that if we ever get anywhere with my ministry, that's the people we're going to help because that's the people that Jesus would have helped. People that Jesus had around him when he walked this earth were called misfits. They were all arrested all the time and in trouble with the law. Jesus loved those people, and he still does today. I feel him in here. I'm not an addict. No, I mean, I always will be, but I don't do or use drugs anymore. And if I had lots of money, I would help every hungry person that I knew. But I don't. So I have to count on the politicians and the, the religious leaders of the community to take care of the community. Quit taking care of yourself. Shine a light so kids can grow up, see you and say, I want to be like that. That's what Christians need to be like. You don't help somebody with food and come to church the next day preaching about how if you were for God, you shouldn't need food. All of God's people need something. Come on. All of God's people need something. There's lonely. There's addicted. There, there are all kinds of shapes and sizes of God's people. I had a preacher really say that in a sermon once, right after he helped us with the groceries. He preached about... How if you are truly a child of God, you'll never need to ask for bread. It doesn't say that in the Bible anywhere. It's just Jesus helped everybody that needed food. He helped people when they needed wine. It's a, it's a quick message tonight, but it's one that I had to get off my chest. But I'm going to tell you this much right now as a Preacher who loves the Bible and a teacher that God sent. I learned this from a preacher who loved the Bible. I'm going to practice what I preach. If I ever make a lot of money, I'm going to give. If I ever see somebody on the side of the road and I have $5 in my pocket that I don't really need for nothing in particular, I just have it there, then they can have it because they need it more than I do. Is what you preach. It's a message that we should live by if we are really Jesus people. And I'm really on my knees to my Savior, a Jesus person. Jesus, we love you and we thank you for this life you gave us. And we ask you to inspire these people that claim your name to help other people in this community. We ask this because we want to help our neighbors. Like the Ten Commandments say, love thy neighbor. 
Jesus, I am on my knees and asking you to help this community get through the crisis that we're in. People don't see it because they set up in their two-story houses and they don't look out past the boundaries. But every day I go to work and I drive past that church and I see those 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 cars lined up the road for food. It breaks my heart that I can't just go window to window and give them something. But I can give them my word. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a short Wednesday message, and it's not anger that, you, that, that I have coming out of me. It's God. It's God. When I come out here, I don't do it every day because God don't tell me to. But when he puts something on my heart heavy enough, and I had a rough day today, and I didn't think today would be the day that God's going to send me out here to do this, but he did because he does things like that all the time. Practice what you preach. Quit chasing people away because you think they're drug addicts. Go to the grocery store with them if you think they're going to buy drugs and buy them food. Then maybe they show up to church next Sunday and you want to preach about how you had to help people and you shouldn't have to help God's people. And then they never come back again and they never get saved and they end up burning in hell. This isn't no... 1950s, 1940s type of preaching. This is real life. And this is the year 2024. How have we not solved homelessness and hungriness by now? With God, anything is possible. The problem is the politicians and the religious leaders of the community that claim God don't actually live by what they claim. How, can, how? How is this me being mean when I'm telling the truth? Matthew 23, 3 states it. Do not do as they do, for they are not alike. This message was on my heart because I, I've had this happen to me so many times when, when I was in hard times in my life, and I'm telling you, there's been so many times where I've been in rough spots, really hard spots. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about when, when God's like, really doing something for you and the devil's really coming at you full-fisted, ready to go and you're fighting your battles every day for Christ and you're trying to live the best you can but you're struggling and you need help to fight him off and the person that should be helping you turns you away. That is not the kind of preachers that Jesus wants on this earth. You have preachers. It's not just preachers. It's religious leaders, religious uh, politicians. They uh, they also claim to be Christian. Where's the help? Help your neighbor. That's all I'm asking. I, I mean, it's not hard. It can't hurt. It can't hurt to help. It can only bless you later. And that's another thing God put on my heart. Something I've been seeing on social media a lot lately is people walking around and helping homeless people with their phones. Filming it. Here, here, take us $500. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't help, man. That's clout. That's clout. That's all you're doing. You may really give them the money. That's fine. That's good. Did you have to film it? That's clout. Jesus was so specific that when people were calling for him, he kept everything so private. He kept everything to himself. He didn't try to be famous or, as we say in today's society, clout. He didn't try to do it. He tried to stay away from it. Even when his disciples were pushing him, you got to do this. You need to show up here. I'll show up there when I'm ready. I don't want nobody expecting me to be there. And that's the way we should live today. It's the way we should live today because there's so many lost people in this world and they see stuff like that and it keeps them from walking into God's house, which it is God's house. And it keeps them from going where they should be going and that's home. So you must be careful. 
to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do. Do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. It's a simple verse. I didn't even study it. God told me, this is what you're talking about. And I feel you, God. I'm with you, brother. I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. There's too many people claiming to be Christian that don't live like they should. If you're a Christian, then you help. You live like Christ. You try to heal. You try to help pay doctor bills when people are sick and they can't afford it. You just do things when you have it. You do things. And I've, I've, something else I've always been told is, well, if it, if it affects you or, or if it comes out of your bank account and it affects anything, any way of your lifestyle, then, then you shouldn't. Hell, I've talked, people have told me that. Christians have told me. So you can't quit buying the name brand stuff and buy some of the off-brand stuff and keep a little money in your pocket to help somebody? Lord, I thank you for this message today. I thank you for all the people in this county. I love each and every one of my fellow county people, and I just ask that if they're hungry, that you provide them with the food they need. If they're starving, that you're there to fill their bellies. I ask that if they're addicted to drugs, that you be their detox center. And I ask for our community leaders, God, for you to come down and show them what life should be like if they're living under God's law. I love each and every one of you all. I pray for each and every one of you all because I know some of those people that are in those lines. And I wish that I could pull this out and give them whatever was in it and my wife would do the same thing. But I can't because I don't have what they need. And really, what they need is man-made because God, that's all we need. I ask that if anybody who's claiming to be Christ-like is doing things they shouldn't be doing, God, you reveal them to the community. And God, I ask that you help each and every member of this community, whether they're lost or saved, I ask that you bring the dark into the light. And I ask for prayers, especially for those that are not rich, that are hooked on drugs and don't, don't didn't know what they were getting themselves into, that have very bad depression, that are suicidal, that cut themselves. I really pray that you heal these people, God, down here in this county at least, if not the world. I mean, really, it's a, it's a bigger spectrum. This county is just a, a speck of what the world is like, God, and we need you now more than we've ever needed you. Because I'm telling you, some of these people are not going to make it if they don't get the leadership that guide them the way they're supposed to go. I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Went a little longer than I thought. I thought I'd be able to do it within a 10 minute time frame. Mm. Oh well, you know what? Whatever God puts on your heart, God puts on your heart and that's what he put on my heart today. So practice what you preach, guys. If I have any final words to this video, it's practice what you preach. Don't let nobody walk into church in front of everybody on a Sunday morning. 30 people sitting in the pews staring at them and turning them away and then laughing about it, the deacons laughed about it. There's no way to be. Even if they were going to buy something they shouldn't have, that's not your business. Your business is God's business. And God will bless you regardless if you do what you're supposed to do. Hopefully Sunday or Saturday I can do a message about Jeremiah. I've done so much research on him. Guys, so be prepared for that. He was such a unique character. In the Bible, he was a real, real, real modern day person that lived back then. So it's going to be really fun when I, when God finally gives me all the knowledge I need to know to preach about Jeremiah and the, 
the life you live. So I love each and every one of you guys. Make sure you guys help your neighbor out if they need help, if you got it. If you don't, don't ever be afraid to ask somebody for help. Don't ever. Because God's people should help each other. That's just the way it should be. Thank you, guys. Love you.